Let's have a look first of all though at a PTE speaking in terms of an overview. What exactly will you have to do on the day of the exam? What are the requirements of the speaking test and what type of tasks will you have to do? Well, as you know, the speaking and the writing are combined into one style of test. So the themes that you will have done previously in the writing may resurface in the speaking task. So don't be surprised that um, the speaking and writing components are actually quite similar in terms of their content and their themes. How long will you have to do? Well, don't worry. It is not 77 to 93 minutes for the speaking test. That would be hell. That would be horrible doing 77 minutes, 93 minutes of speaking. No, you're not a public speaker. That is 77 minutes to 93 minutes with the combined speaking and writing task. And the, the writing task will actually take up the bulk of that part. How many questions do you have to do? You have to do seven types of questions plus a small intro. The intro will just simply form as an introduction of yourself. Think of it as a casual chat with you and the uh, with you and the computer, like you're talking to an examiner, for example. And how what will, you, what will your total score be be for them? Um, the speaking and the writing. Well, you'll have 90 points designated out of the out of the points of the entire speaking exams. So we're dedicated to the speaking and the writing. So look at that. that's how it's going to be weighed for you. Okay. So here is a table which shows you a little bit more information in terms of the speaking and the writing sections of this uh, of the PTE examination. So you'll see in the left hand side we have the speaking and writing components. They are the introduction, read aloud, repeat sentence, describe image, which we are focusing on today, retell lecture, answer short question, and then finally onto the writing tasks. You have two of those to do. We've covered these in the previous videos. Summarize written text and write essay. How many items will you have to do per task? Well, there's only one introduction. There will be six to seven read aloud tasks. There will be 10 to 12 repeat sentences. There will be six to seven describe images. There will be three to four retail lectures and there will be 10 to 12 answer short questions. In addition to the writing, two to three summarize written texts and one to two write essay. So even though those numbers are quite large, for example, you have 10 to 12 repeat sentences and six to seven describe images, these tasks are all very, very short. They're very, very short, a minute or two per task. So they do add up in terms of their time. How is your total time of 77 to 93 minutes broken down? Well, you have one minute for the introduction. You will have 30 to 35 minutes combined for the speaking task and you will have 20 to 20, 20 to 30 minutes for the summarized written text and 20 to 40 minutes for the right essay. So think of that. Think of your speaking task as one third, approximately one third of the entire um, PTE speaking and writing section and the writing constitutes the other two thirds. So the speaking isn't that long. It will also fly by with the amount of speaking you have to do because you're going to be very, very focused on uh, the tasks at hand. So think of it. It will go very, very quickly, I think. Okay, it's PTE speaking scoring criteria. Let's have a look in terms of how it's gonna be scored for you on the day. So remember, the marking for all communicative and enabling skills such as speaking is conducted by machines. You are not going to be assessed and evaluated by a, um, a person, by an examiner. It is all gonna be done by machines using PTE special technology. Here is some scoring criteria for the speaking component of the test. So in terms of the content and how it's being defined in terms of defining criteria, think of it this way. For question types that require exact answers, including read aloud, repeat sentence, etc., what we're not studying today, but this is still going to be useful information for you. Replacements, omissions, or insertions of words count as errors. For long answer types, like describe image or retell lecture, what we are going to be looking at today, the scoring is based on how many of the crucial fundamentals in the image lecture have been covered in class. So think of your content to be as fully inclusive as possible. You want to try and talk about the picture in as much detail as possible within the time limits. Uh, omissions will also count as errors, but think about your fluency and the content you are covering. What other communicative skills will be assessed in these tasks? Other important measures are pronunciation and oral fluency, i.e. how natural and native like they are. The central thing to note here is not to complicate pronunciation with accent. Native like pronunciation means the correct way to pronounce the word, not the way it is accentuated by natives of, say, Britain or the US. So you want to try and uh, perfect your pronunciation in terms of the way you've learned to think of the IPA chart, the International Phonetic um, Alphabet. How have you perfected your own pronunciation? Now, 
uh, suffice to say, not all natives of the UK, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, um, South Africa, or the US, for example, all speak with perfect pronunciation. Myself from Ireland, for example, the way I pronounce some uh, diphthongs, for example, is very, very different to how uh, an American would say it, um, a British person would say it, or even an Australian would say it. So don't think about how to sound just like a native speaker, because no native speaker sounds the same as another native speaker from a different country. Think about how you can speak with the best native-like inflection that you've learned in terms of your IPA. You are not being assessed on uh, how good your British accent is, how good your American accent is, for example. It's about your own pronunciation and oral fluency that matters the most. So think about your own pronunciation and uh, how well you can say the words in terms of how you have learned them. Do not try and sound like a native speaker. Okay? If you do sound like a native speaker, then that's all good, but don't feel like you need to focus on it.